Joining us right now, first on CNBC, following that uh, decision that some have described as historic, is SEC Chair Gary Gensler. Uh, Chair Gensler, we appreciate you being with us. L let me start by asking you this. Do you consider the decision uh, historic? And it appears that it's a decision that you made um, either reluctantly or perhaps even begrudgingly. Well, look, uh, Andrew, uh, th this has been considered for a long time, as you know, uh, uh, starting under Chair uh, Clayton. We had uh, disapproved a number of these over the years, and something had changed. Uh, I'm a deep believer in the rule of law and a respect for the courts, and taking uh, a new court decision into consideration, uh, we move forward. I think this is the most sustainable path forward. So it appears, though, from what you're saying and, and reading through the, the decision as well, that what changed is not necessarily something inherent to crypto or Bitcoin per se, but what changed was what the courts did. Is that the way to think about this? Well, I, I, again, I mean, we do everything here at the Securities and Exchange Commission within the law and within how the courts interpret those laws. And uh, that's what the American people expect. And that's what uh, we do here. What is your message to investors about Bitcoin now? Because we're going to have all sorts of public investors now potentially have access to Bitcoin in a way that they didn't before. We were just talking uh, to Larry Fink. Uh, he said that uh, he got a, a huge wave of uh, new investors uh, getting into Bitcoin through this ETF. Uh, you have still uh, suggested to be cautious uh, about it. And I, I'm trying to understand how you think about those cross currents in terms of the message you're telling investors? Well, look, uh, Bitcoin itself, we did not approve. We do not endorse. This is a product called an exchange traded product, a way uh, that investors can invest in that underlying non-security commodity called Bitcoin. But yes, investors, I think, should be uh, aware that this the underlying asset is a highly speculative, volatile asset. And uh, amongst its uh, use cases is really uh, for illicit activity, money laundering and sanctions and ransomware and the like. And uh, I I've know that you've asked other people over the last few days, um, is it being used as a s store of value? It's a speculative, volatile store of value. Is it being used as a payment anywhere? Are we buying cups of coffee with it? Not really. The only payment mechanism it's being used for uh, in, in sort of an, in a primary sense is illicit activity. So I think you've been spot on about that, Andrew. So just uh, on that note, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, someone, th this is out, and I'm not going to take you know, either side on, on the whole thing. And it's kind of funny. Uh, but it, these are, I, I don't know the exact units, but if you look since 2017, what's been used to launder money, uh, 20,000 is the unit for, 20,000 is the unit for a dollar, 33 is the unit f for Bitcoin. So that, that's a multiple of I don't know how much for dollars being used for money laundering versus Bitcoin. But now I could see Bitcoin Bear saying, Really? Well, it's not even good for money laundering. Then it has zero value. I could just see that as another uh, uh, arrow in the quiver for the bear case. But what I was, the question I wanted to ask you uh, was, this, let's take the continuum. Let's take the rat poison, Beanie Baby, J Jamie Dimon, Charlie Munger versus we had yesterday on our Coinbase CEO. Did you hear him make the case for Bitcoin, I mean, it, it was be it was almost like a symphony to Bitcoin bulls, uh, Chair Gensler. Look, look, it, the, the proof of yeah. work, uh, akin to gold. Every monetary aspect we've had for thousands of years is represented perfectly. And, and Tom Lee, there's never been a mistake on the blockchain out of trillions of transactions. You 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 understand it. You taught at MIT. Which is it? Is it a beanie baby in your view, or is it something that has inherent value that's going to be part of the financial system decades from now? Which is it? Look, there, no doubt there are innovations within this field, 
and those innovations which I taught about at MIT around a ledger system. It's just an accounting system called the blockchain technology. But there's an irony in the midst of this. Satoshi Nakamoto said this was going to be a decentralized system. And, and finance, this has led to centralization. Think about the irony of those who say this week is historic. This was about centralization and traditional means of finance that investors who could already express themselves in Bitcoin, you could already, before this week, buy it through major brokerage houses, but now you can buy it through this thing called an exchange-traded product but the underlying as well, asset still has centralized. Those, those, the underlying asset still has the decentralized, distributed ledger, all those characters. I, I, that sounds like a... I don't know. That does. That sounds no, like no, a, no a, Andrew. With all respect, it, there's a lot of centralization right. here, and even the underlying ledger right. is largely right. uh, the, the bitcoins produced by sure. a handful of mining uh, uh, companies and the like. And so I'm just saying now, right. in terms of monetary history, monetary history. We have a dollar, we have a yen, we have a euro, we have the renminbi, and there's right. a reason for it because we do have a common economy that relies on those currencies. Chair, Chair Genzer, let me ask you this, though. Um, is there a possibility, uh, despite the fact that this has been now approved, that this spot ETF has been approved, that you could see a day where Bitcoin itself in some way would be outlawed? Um, I ask because if you recall, and now there's a lawsuit taking place between uh, Coinbase and the SEC, um, they went public and they've now made... Uh, You've, you've come back and said there are certain uh, unregistered uh, securities and the like that are on their platform. They say, well, if you approved us the first time, uh, how can you come back and say that this is not uh, kosher? And so I think there is this other question uh, about, and I know you're not endorsing Bitcoin, does that still open up the possibility that Bitcoin could somehow come under fire from the SEC or some other agency? Um, look, let me, let me talk about this field more broadly. Uh, and the American public is aware of this. It's rife with uh, conflicts. It's rife with fraud and abuse uh, without prejudging any one token. Many of these tokens, uh, I would suggest a majority of these tokens are actually securities under the securities law. Um, and, uh, and so the platforms, the various uh, places that you might buy or sell these uh, crypto security tokens, uh, need to come into compliance with the federal laws. What did you make of uh, what Elizabeth Warren, who was very supportive of you taking this role originally, uh, coming out and saying the SEC is wrong on the law and wrong on the policy? Uh, I, I have uh, deep respect for uh, uh, those who may have been on the other side of this. Uh, but again, uh, I have a deep respect for the law and how courts interpret the law. We had the D.C. Circuit, uh, a three-judge uh, right. uh, panel rule on this. We looked at it, and I thought this was the most sustainable path forward. How do you think about other cryptocurrencies? People are now talking about whether there should be an Ethereum ETF and the like. Is that something that you think you would take on uh, proactively? Is that something that ultimately, in the same way that Grayscale had to go to court, is, is that is the, is the court decision around Bitcoin to you uh, act as a precedent on other currencies? I, I, I look at what we did this week as it's cabin to one non-security commodity uh, called Bitcoin, like we've had gold spot exchange-traded products and silver exchange-traded right. products in the past and approved in the past. This is cabin just to that one non-security commodity token.